player to earn the Big Ten Jesse Owens Male Athlete of the Year Award, which was introduced in 1992. He's one of five Iowa student athletes and the first in 13 years to be presented with the Big Ten's most prestigious annual award. Other previous Hawkeyes selected include wrestlers Brent Metcalf in 2008, Barry Davis in 1985, Ed Bannock in 1983, and football's Chuck Long in 1986. Garza swept all major postseason men's basketball awards in 2021, including the Wooden, Naismith, Associated Press, Oscar Robertson, NABC, Lute Olson, and the Sporting News to become the program's first consensus national player of the year. With KCJJ News, I'm Tommy Lang. Now look at the weather forecast from SevereStudios.com. With a look at your forecast, I'm meteorologist Ashley O'Connor. Partly cloudy skies tonight with a low temp near 70. Hazy sunshine tomorrow. Highs will reach the upper 80s and low 90s. Lots of sunshine heading into the weekend. It will be hot with highs Saturday in the low 90s and highs Sunday in the mid 90s. The hot and dry conditions will continue into much of next week with high temps in the low 90s. That's weather on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Right now, it's 84. 1630 KCJJ. To start off my show today, I have uh, songwriter, podcaster, pop rock artist, and my friend, AJ Marks, on the phone. Hello. How you doing? Hi. Oh, my God. It's the famous radio DJ Molly Oh, my God. Shooter. It's the f- famous pop rock musician aj marks <laughs> how are you i'm good how are you thank you very much for agreeing to be on the show today thank you for having me thank you for having me okay so um i know that you specifically asked me to introduce you as a songwriter first and i was wondering <laughs> mm-hmm. um why that is see I um, I love being an artist, and I've, I've recently developed this like uh, podcasting habit. Um, yes. I have my whole podcasting business over in the UK and everything. But um, I think I see myself primarily as a songwriter. I think where I see myself in life, and where I see myself, in, or where I feel most comfortable in all the different spaces that I've been in recently um, in terms of working on songs and everything, I think I just feel more comfortable like behind the keyboard or behind the desk or Mm -hmm. behind, um, behind the mask, basically writing and uh, working with people I trust. And, you know, I love being on stage, but I also, I love the recording process. I love the writing process. So I think songwriter is definitely where I, I would say and producer, but it's most mostly oh. just do like I mostly do like vocal production. I'm not very good at instruments, so. Well, that was actually another one of my questions too. Like, do you self <laughs> do you self produce? Do you collaborate with like established producers? Both, neither, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I um. So I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with some amazing producers who really taught me a lot about my own style of production. And um, I think something that I've kind of been kind of rigid on and more like steadfast and I feel like I really believe in is my vocal production, but learning how to arrange and learning how to uh, see bigger pictures and what, you know, I'll be in the studio and we'll work on a song and we'll lay out all like the main parts, the main guitar line, the main, drums and main bass and it'll sound very empty and then I just kind of sit there and I listen to the song and I start like humming over this other line it's not a vocal line it's not a harmony it's just like some other rhythm Mm -hmm. and we'll throw that in there either through vocals or we'll throw it in we'll you know because I play a little bit of piano so I'll be able to kind of type that into um, a synth or whatever or sometimes I'll have a guitar player or, or one of the other producers pick up a guitar and kind of mimic what I'm singing. But um, oh, cool! I I know that Michael Jackson did that a lot. Like I, I think he mostly produced. I mean, I might be making this up, but I I know that some people have said like he mostly produced. Like came up with ideas and like used his mouth to kind of translate those ideas. 
So I definitely, there are a lot of things in my songs, a lot of synth lines or guitar lines or whatever that I just kind of started out as me going like, da-da-da-da-da, like, you know, kind of vocalizing it to Mm -hmm. someone who could actually play guitar and, you know, came through that way. So, but there's a lot of, I get very specific with what I have in my head. And so I think a lot of people think producing is just, is just exclusively engineering, touching the, uh, touching the computer and moving things around and whatever. But I think um, having the big ideas and seeing the big picture is um, the ultimate uh, production t- uh, tool. So that is kind of where I lie in terms of production. All right. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> so um, <laughs> one of my questions that I always ask for like Reddit AMAs or whenever I have a chance to ask a songwriter a question, it's always, um, what is your songwriting process like? Do you start with music? Do you start with lyrics? See, I always find this so interesting to ask songwriters as well. Like anytime I meet a songwriter or anytime I get into a session with another songwriter, um, to work on someone's project, I'm always like, okay, so how do you write? Like, how do we, what are you most comfortable with because sometimes I'm like, let's just not do that. Let's just try a new way. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, perfect. I write exactly that way too. Like let's, let's do that. So um, there are a lot of different ways to tackle it. The main way that I go about writing my own songs usually um, is like, I like to just come up with, I like to have someone play the guitar and just fiddle around with some chords Mm-hmm. Or, you know, a producer will come to me with um, some beats and then I'll already have kind of this like foundation of some music, but then I'll need to top line essentially, which just means like sing over it. So I always just kind of like um, whatever comes to mind, I'll take out my phone and I'll record what I'm humming so I don't forget just in case there's a good idea and then I forget what I did. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, my phone recordings are, like, two hours long. Um, but it's just my my favorite part is essentially forming the melodies and just every time it loops around, just trying a new thing. Sometimes, you know, I'll build on it a different way. Sometimes I'll scrap it all together and do something completely different. Um, and then what I do specifically is sometimes I'll have some random words kind of spill out of me as I'm doing that so um Mm. I'll be humming something and I'll say you know I don't know any better and then I'll have that line and I'll be like okay cool like don't know any better like I kind of like that that kind of works with the melody you know and I just say words specifically so I remember what um what the melody is like attaching words to it really helps you remember how the song goes like so, filler or become like, like 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 filler words yes exactly so words that mean nothing like if you saw how any of these songs started <laughs> they're all like you would look at those lyrics and be like what but they all sound good so like the words if you don't pay attention to the words they all sound like they make sense and then you pay attention you like i have no idea what you're talking about so <laughs> I mean, and I don't either. I just find words that kind of sound good. And then I'll take one or two lines, like maybe somewhere in the chorus, and I'll be like, okay, let's build a whole idea off of this one line. So I know I have a song called um, Don't Know Any Better, where I just, that was part of the melody. And then I was like, okay, so let's create a story. Like, let's let's I'm like why mm. would I be saying that in the chorus oh, like what's the whole song about you kind of create a concept around a mistake essentially and that's kind of my favorite way to write that's cool um, but I have there I have two songs that really that are based in real life and that's not usually how I write songs um I know some people love to just like make up stories and make up scenarios and just kind of live in a fantasy in their head and others are, you know, like Taylor Swift kind of style songwriters where everything is very personal and very, um, yes, exactly. Yeah. So I have two songs that are kind of 
in that style, which are like, it's not normally what I do. Um, I have one song called I Can't Kiss You When I'm Sober. That's a great song. Which, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, it's my favorite, one of my favorite songs that I've written. And um, the funny thing about that is like, I came up with that line. Um, the way I wrote that song is I passed someone on the street and I, that I had previously kissed when I was not sober. Wow. And I was just thinking like, it's so weird that, you know, it's like you see someone on the street and it's like, you so weird that like, it's almost like it didn't happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I was just thinking like, I can't kiss you when I'm sober just as like a it just got stuck in my head and so i started singing like this little this little line over and over again and i recorded it into my phone and then i forgot about it for like two weeks and i had a songwriting session and i came into the songwriting session and i was like well what about this idea so i played the i can't kiss you when i'm sober line mm-hmm. and so we kind of just formed a whole thing around that but it kind of made it about the scenario I, I i embellished a little bit i made you know, it a little cheeky. I made mm-hmm. it not exactly true to the situation, but it just, it started from like a real idea. And so I really like that. I like that song because it's kind of not normally what I would do. And I did that again with one of my songs called The Switch. Also good where, song. <laughs> um, my, my friend, we were all drunk one night and we were sitting around the table and my friend was lamenting about uh, what she had just been through with uh, my other friend, essentially. Mm -hmm. And she was, like, really upset, and she was like, this is the situation. And then she was talking about how one was really into the other, and then um, when they kissed, the other was really into them, and they weren't really into it. So it was like... (laughs) And so in my... So I have a list of notes on my phone that um, are just random throwaway lines that sound good in a song. So I wrote, and when they kissed, it switched. Yeah. And so brought it later into a songwriting session, and I said, oh, I could write, you know, they had um, a song pretty much already written in terms of, like, musically. They had, like, a, um, a guitar riff and everything, and I was, like, my band at the time. And, um... I was like, okay, I got to write something on top of this. And so I was like looking through my phone. I was like, what, what's a good story? I saw that and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a story out of this. So it's loosely related to the actual situation. Um, and then part of it's just me getting into the storytelling and making a thing out of it. So um, I like to dream a little bit and make things up. <laughs> but um, it That's was cool. funny because I had a performance. I had a performance. Uh, where at this point, so when I wrote that song, one of the people it was about was not my drummer. But by the time I performed it a couple of years later, um, because it was one of my songs that was out and I was just about to release it. And so I was performing it on stage and I said, ironically enough, this next song is (laughs) about two people, two of my friends. One of them is in the audience, and one of them is on stage with me oh right now. Gosh. And I went, hit it. <laughs> and neither of them know it's about them. So Really? <laughs> Wait, they couldn't yes. even guess? <laughs> well, a- afterwards, the drummer came up to me and was like, who's that about? Like, who was on stage with us? Like, <laughs> he was like, I was trying to figure it out. And I was like, you. you. Right? Like, it's about you. Like, And I was like, it's about you and blank. And so um, it was just really funny. Uh, but I love, I love kind of just like, and I was like, obviously it's not the whole situation, but you know, just taking a little line and running with it is kind of how I write. That's cool. I've actually never heard that before. Usually people, when I ask that question, they will answer like, oh, it changes every time. Sometimes I'll get like an idea for music and sometimes I'll just get an idea for lyrics, but you kind of said like, you take ideas and then, like, come back to it later or sometimes get ideas, like, while you're playing with something. And I like that. That's really cool. Um, yeah. I, I, I know a lot of people who have just a ton of ideas, either, like, um, melodically 
recorded in their phone or like lyrically recorded or lyrically written down in their notes. Mm -hmm. And so it's always nice walking into a session and just having things to like, I was inspired a couple of days ago or I was inspired a couple of weeks ago or even a year ago. And you bring it back and you're like, Oh, I remember this. Um, And usually if something sticks around in your phone for long enough and you still like it, that's how you know it's a good idea. Yeah. So for sure. So uh, you said that – did I, I know this just because I'm your friend, but I'm not sure if uh, when I first answered the phone you said this, but you are actually based in the U.K. Uh, oh, yes, I am. I'm, uh, I was based in Liverpool for four and a half years. And could you explain, um, or actually almost five years. Could you explain to the audience why that is? I think they're going to be very interested to know. <laughs> I'm sure they will be. Um, so I went to the Liverpool Institute for for Performing Arts, uh, for my university. Um, it was founded by Sir Paul McCartney. Sir Paul, Um, who is not quite the famous radio DJ known as Molly Suter, but... You're right. He He wishes he was me. He (laughs) he wishes he was you. Um, we, we have discussed this. Um, but, uh, I, you know, what is crazy um, getting into that school because I really did not expect to get in. Like, I remember when I was first looking at it, I was like, oh, all the way over in the UK, like, that's kind of daunting. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and Wikipedia said it was a 4% acceptance rate. Whoa, so I was like, that's I was not like, a lot. oh, that's like lower than, what's that lower than? Like, uh, Harvard or whatever? So I was like, oh, man. I like, I was like, I why even bother? It was my first thought because I was like, there's no, there's no way. Like, that's such a stretch. Um, and then I went through a lot of things and came back to it like a year later. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I am going to apply. And I'm so glad I did because it's, it's such a nice, it's, just, it's an incredible school. Like, the, because they have such a small acceptance rate, Mm-hmm. They're accepting people who are they already know are like really musically talented and um, know what they're doing musically. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's less of a focus on like being a good musician, and it's more of a focus on like okay, we know you're a good musician already because um, I'd been in the industry for eight years at that point when I first joined. Um, they're like okay, well, well we know you've already you know been doing music and we've um, and all of that. Uh, so we're just going to focus on making sure that you can make a career out of this. Like focus on um, the business aspect of it and focus on, you know, making sure you can hustle and, you know, get yourself signed if that's what you want or get a lot of streams and be independent if that's what you want or um, manage ar- artists and get into a management firm if that's what you want. Like mm-hmm. they were very um, goal-based. And I really, really loved that. And um, the crazy thing about LIPA, which is what it's called for short, um, not LIPA, not like <laughs> Dua Dua Lipa. Lipa. <laughs> she was she was actually just blowing up when we um, when I first moved to Liverpool. So I remember I kept calling her Dua Lipa, yeah, because I was so used to saying LIPA. Um, but no, do she did not go to the so, school, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, she actually. Okay, so what's wild here is, and what I was just about to say is, okay. like, so she didn't go to the school, but um, you have some of her like most collaborated with songwriters, like Caroline Aylin, who went to the school, and you had, you know, uh, S. G. Lewis and Francis um, are two artists who wrote the song Hallucinate, Ooh. and they both went to LIPA, and, you know, she has management ties with LIPA, and it's just, there's a lot of, um, there's a, like, I feel like just everything, especially with her in particular, just always comes back to LIPA, but there's, um, <laughs> but there are lots of um, LIPA grads that just, they stay together. Like, speaking of S.G. Lewis, um, I have a podcast uh, called Main Pod Girl. Yes, you do. Who I do with another, 
<laughs> which Molly's been on. I've been on it. <laughs> um, but the other um, co-host is also from Lipa, who I have my podcast business with. And then we sat down with S.G. Lewis yesterday, um, and we were talking to him about his work with Francis, who's also from Lipa, and then his manager is also from Lipa. So it's oh just, gosh. you know, a it's, family it's a reunion. huge network. <laughs> and it's a yeah, family reunion, exactly. Um, and so it was just wild that, you know, it's, it's such a cool school because um, you could collaborate with anyone. And it's really, you know, the friendships and the contacts you make at that school really, like, kind of set you up for life. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, they, they, you go into the school and in orientation, they're like, look around because like the people that you'll be working with in these next three years are going to be probably working with you for the rest of your life, just going off of our grads. So, oh, so I was like, wow, th- that's awesome. So it's a three year school, not a four year. I'm just so used to four being the default. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they do, um, three year, three years of like the main part of school, if that makes sense. Um, but you can do like a foundation year mm-hmm. ahead of time. So, um, like some people, I, I think it's like opt in for some people, and then for others, it's like they the school might request that you do a foundation year to okay. get accepted. Did so, you have to do that? Before, I did not know. <laughs> hey, nice. I just went in for the three years. All right. So. Um... Yeah, we were talking about your collaborator, who is Sola, who is also an artist in her own right. Um, yes. Have you guys written together? I don't think I've ever asked you, asked you that, like written a song I, together. Yes, we have written uh, actually quite a few songs. Um, we have a lot of mutual friends also from Lipa, but just in general, because we do a lot of stuff together in terms of podcasting and whatnot. Um, so we've been in a lot of the same rooms, a lot of the same writing rooms. Mm -hmm. We have very different styles, but it's always, you you know, interesting and exciting to work with someone who has like a different approach to it than you do. And she is similar in the way that she likes to come up with melodies first. So, um, but yeah, she's great. She just released a song, um, called Embers. Embers. Boom Dice. Yeah. Who's Grammy nominated producer. Who Guess what? also from Lipa. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> Graduated like 10 years ago. I'm glad that there's such a, like a large network of people collaborating even after graduation. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's been nice to like extend outside of that as well. Like mm-hmm. it's, um, I was talking about earlier, you asked what producers um, I've been working with, mm-hmm. um, so I've, you know, had the pleasure to work with people like John Delph and Mark Winterburn. They have been my main collaborators for the songs that I've released previously and am going to release in the future. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so John and Mark are most closely tied with Five Seconds of Summer, Ooh. Um, but they're also... I've also worked with Lily Allen and James Arthur. Um, I've also... I play Five Sauce a lot. Is, yes, Five Sauce is great. Yeah. They did. They do great They do great work with Five Sauce. Um, I remember they were... Um, I was in the studio one time, and I played them a reference of a song. Because when you go into the studio and you're talking to producers about how you want something to sound, you play them a couple songs of what you envision your song to sound like. Mm-hmm. And so I played them... Five Seconds of Summer song, I think it was on the Ghostbusters soundtrack. And they go, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, turn around. And I was like, okay. And I turned around and they're like, yeah, that was recorded right there. Oh, I my like, gosh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's really weird. <laughs> what, so, was the, what was the um, song for the Ghostbusters soundtrack? Um, I think it was Girls Talk Boys. Yes, Girls Talk Boys. That's it. I was it's trying to think of the name. Song. It is a good song. Five Stars doing disco. I love it. So, uh, um, mm-hmm. no, I said, uh, earlier you were talking about collaborating, 
collaborating with Sola and other people with like different uh, styles as you. And since you're mostly a pop rock musician, is there a genre that maybe you haven't tried that you want to get into or like just try? Yeah, I um, it's funny because it, when it comes to genre, I was very hmm. Like I was when I was in my band um, before I went solo, mm-hmm. essentially, or started a solo career. Because we're I, I still consider the band together because. I mean, I'm going to see them today. Like, Are you like One um, Direction I, on quote unquote hiatus? Um, no, like I wouldn't even say hiatus because I mean, aside from in the pandemic, like every time I've come back to the U.S. and gotten to see them, we're just like, let's play a bunch of shows together and like let's you know mm-hmm. write a song or do whatever. So oh, okay. I still like, yeah, we still have a great relationship. They're my boys. They're my brothers. I grew up with them. Um, I don't know if I said this, but I. We started the band when I was 10. You didn't and, say this, but I, and, I knew. And we, yeah, and we um, set a Guinness World Record for the youngest professional rock band in the world. That's so, awesome. Um, was it the Black Diamonds? Black Diamonds, yeah. yeah. So when I was writing with them, I um, always leaned towards pop because mm-hmm. it was a rock band, and I was just my mind just always like skewed towards pop. Um, so it was nice kind of blend of, it was rock music, but I had that kind of pop mentality. Um, and then it was funny cause I moved to Liverpool and so I was like, oh, well, I'm going to have to write, start writing songs for myself now because I'm physically in a different country. <laughs> and I thought I wanted to go into pop music, but then I like all my songs kind of skewed rock. Um, while I was trying to make pop music. So I kind of ended up making pop rock music. Mm-hmm. I was just really, I remember being in the clubs and hearing Avril Lavigne and um, yes. Jesse's Girl and whatever. And I just, I was like, you know what? Why isn't this here anymore? Um, I was like, I gotta, okay. I gotta bring this back. Little did I know I was four years too early, but <laughs> um, as Christina would say, ahead of my time. Yes. Um, but uh, I would love to, to answer your question. Sorry, this is a long. No, that's all right. Right about <laughs> that's, all right. that's why I called this a conversation um, and not an interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love to write like folk or R and B. I listen to I listen to a lot of um, folk music. I love Jonathan Edwards. He was my actual. He was my last concert before COVID hit. Um, I. I'm obsessed with that man. I love him so much. Uh, I love his music so much, I should say. Um, I've only met him once. But oh. I, uh, you know, listen to a lot of Patty Griffin. Um, I really enjoy folk music in that way. You know, obviously your classics like Joni and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, I also love soul music. And um, so, and R&B. So I listen to a lot of like Mary J. Blige. Um, Leon Bridges, Ooh. Judith Hill. So, I like um, Leon Bridges. Yeah, Emily King as well. So I, it's funny because it's like those aren't naturally where I go to write. I'm always very much in like kind of like a pop mentality, mm-hmm. but um, it's what I listen to. So and when I was um, my last vocal teacher kept saying like to me, she was like. AJ, you really should explore, you know, soul music more because, or R&B music more because that's kind of, your voice sits really well there. So it's something I've always wanted to kind of get around to. Um, we'll see how long that takes me uh, before I dip into a little bit, but I just, um, it's definitely something that's been on my mind. I'm kind of, you know, what's funny is this is also something I probably shouldn't be saying because then as soon as I say it out loud, I have to stick to it but um i've been thinking of making a jonathan edwards cover album because just for fun just for fun and because i love singing those songs and that's like you know the songs i sing every time i'm in the car every Mm -hmm. time i'm in the shower it's like it's always it's always jonathan edwards i didn't even know cover albums were a thing until ryan adams did taylor's 1989 back in what 2015 20 yeah yeah i remember that 
Yeah, I didn't even know um, that was a thing. <laughs> I think it's, it's cool that it like, is. Yeah, I. It was. Um, I. It, I don't know where I got the idea from, but I was just like, I like all these songs, and I just want to cover them. And I might as well just cover them in a collection. Might as so. well. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn to play harmonica first, though. But speaking of new music, you have a new song to premiere on I my do. show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, okay, so I am, this is a Molly Suter exclusive. I have not said this anywhere. I actually just uploaded it yesterday, so just kind of a spur of the moment, kind of for this um, interview or for this conversation, conversation. as you put it. Um, I am releasing my debut EP as a solo artist on August 13th. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> it'll consist of four songs, three of which have been released so those songs are i'm the worst i can't kiss you when i'm sober and the switch um but one has yet to come out that's called love to hate me that's going to be the name of the ep just so it's not confusing so if people are looking for (laughs) the new song it's right there um and that song is i made a trilogy so i wrote i'm the worst which was the first song i kind of wrote for my solo career and when I knew I had this, like, kind of... That was the first, like, pop rock song I wrote. Mm -hmm. That was the first song I produced all by myself. Oh, Um, cool. And the final version is not produced by me, like, completely, but it's the first song that, like, I produced the whole demo by myself. I felt really proud of it, Mm -hmm. and I worked on it for months and months. Like, I wrote the song in a day, and I worked on that song for months, and then, like, for the demo, and then it went through three different versions. So it ended up being worked on for years, like from 2017 to its release in 2019. Oh my gosh. I think I released it on the anniversary of when I wrote it. <laughs> two year anniversary. Um, so I wrote that song. And then in that, I was so inspired kind of by that whole, you know, tongue in cheek negativity kind of thing that I wrote, love to hate me as well in this kind of like alter ego um of someone who's just kind of um you know easily hated i guess um which i don't know if i consider myself that no um, i'm glad you said kind of sorry go ahead (laughs) what were you gonna say sorry i was gonna say i'm glad that you said alter ego because i know i i've listened to i'm the worst and i've listened to the song that we're gonna play in a little bit and it's all like, oh, they love to hate me. I'm the worst. And I'm just like, no, you're not. <laughs> I don't know anyone who hates you. So, like, well, I'm glad you said, you specified no. it was an alter ego. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's, it's not necessarily how I see myself, but I just, I don't know. I kind of get into that character, into that mindset. And like I said, I like creating stories and, um, you know, I like kind of living in that mentality just for a little bit or just for a song or whatever so when i wrote i'm the worst i wrote a follow-up love to hate me and i wrote um a third in a trilogy called everyone's favorite villain which was the name of my band at the time when i was writing these Mm -hmm. um everyone's favorite villain i think that got axed or hit the cutting room floor i still really like it but you know i we never recorded it we never ended up it was kind of it was kind of raunchy not gonna lie um <laughs> a lot of swearing a lot of just you know yes wild lyrics which i i always like i always like the surprising wait i want to hear lyrics, that but, um, <laughs> send that to me yeah maybe i'll <laughs> maybe i'll send it to you <laughs> but anyway so love to hate me we recorded and i i love love to hate me like i i love it because it's just kind of like one of those euphoric kind of anthems like the chorus just kind of hits you across the face and i have um a little musical nod to one of my favorite pop songs of all time uh american girl by bonnie mckee i love that song there's a a musical rhythm yeah there's a specific musical rhythm in that song that i um mirrored for love to hate me as kind of a nod as a kind of a reference to 
um, Bonnie because I that song deserved the world and it should have been number one and um, I'm I very re- upset that it didn't. I <laughs> remember it being a, a that, very minor hit. It wasn't very like yeah, it was yeah, <laughs> it was like a YouTube hit for a couple days or something. But um, has a great music video, great artist, um, great writer. So uh, I wanted to honor her. So that's it's funny because everyone else hears it as something else, and then I listen to that song and all I think about is American Girl because I remember putting that reference in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's my song. It's called Love to Hate Me. It'll kind of finish off um, some of the pop rock stuff that I've recorded, and then I am excited to start maybe a new era Ooh. in the fall. Um, I just kind of wanted to... I was sitting on Love to Hate Me for like two years, or three years almost, oh and um, I was just... it. I was just ready to um, release it. You know, and then kind of go into the next era and have my next adventure. So, mm-hmm. all right, I'm really, so... really excited. Molly Suter listeners get to hear it first. Yes, but before I play that, uh, you want to tell the people where they can follow you and uh, your podcasts. Yes, um, you can follow me at AJ Marks Official on all streaming platforms or all not streaming platforms, all uh, social media platforms. Yeah. And on streaming platforms, you can follow me at AJ Mark. Um, that's just my name. So, uh, and then you can listen to my podcast and you can listen to the podcast with Molly. Um, yeah. It's called Main Pod Girl. And then I have, it's about pop music for um, uh, Reddit, subreddit uh, called Pop Heads. Um, and then there's another one that we have that's out called American Idiots Abroad, which is about the differences between the U S and the UK told from Americans living in the UK. So we have a lot of fun with that. And that one has two seasons. We're on a season break right now, but we'll be coming back real soon. All right. Well, I know you're a busy boy and you got to get going, but, um, thank you so much for coming on my show today. And, uh, Thank you for... for having me. Thank you for inspiring me to just, you know, <laughs> giving course. me the courage to just release this last song. And, um, you know, I'm so honored that I got to be on your show. Awesome. All right.